Hi everyone, welcome to another Stillwater Adventure. I'm Phil Rowley. Today I'm at Corbett Lake Lodge. I'm here for two week-long back-to-back Stillwater seminars, but I got here a day early just to figure out what's going on. So join me on the water and let's see what I discover. Well, it's morning. I just had a nice bacon and tomato sandwich for breakfast, actually two, they were pretty good, filled the belly, that'll get me going until dinner. I just launched the boat and Corbett Lake's behind me, waiting to be discovered. One of the first things you gotta do when you set up, dunk the landing net, lucky landing net dunk. So she's wet, ready to go. So what are my setups gonna be for my little exploration tour here before my Stillwater School starts? Well, I'm gonna be using either my Mystic M-Series 10 foot three inch six weight or the Reaper X um, 10 foot uh, six weight, great rod. Both of these rods are great for still water applications. So this is my Reaper X. On this, I've got a fast sinking clean sweep. I've got the fast series. So this line sinks at uh, four inches per second on the rear section, six inches per second in the middle, and with a one and a half inch per second clear sink tip. And what this allows you to do is sweep those deep waters with flies like fabs, gomphus, uh, back swimmer patterns. We are just trying to find out where the fish may be suspended if we're not having any luck adjacent to the drop off or on the shoals itself. For exploring the edges of the drop off and on the shoals, I've got my Coastal Quick Shooter coupled again with a Mystic M Series 10 foot 3 inch 6 weight. This is a great rod for using with fabs, gomphus right along the drop off or throwing a few casts onto the shoal because of the slow sink rate of the line and the buoyant pattern, I can explore those shallow areas with a brisk retrieve with minimal risk of hangups. And then of course, we can fish indicators with my Rio Stillwater line. Again, this is on the Mystic M series six weight. I can use this with indicators to fish blobs, chronomids perhaps, or maybe a few late season chronomid hatches going on. Or I can get rid of the indicator, uh, the, the indicator itself, sorry, and fish back swimmer, boatman patterns, imitative nymphs like crunchers and halfbacks, fish them right on the shoal, right up against the bank in skinny water, quick little retrieves, and I can pick up and lay down if fish are moving, the floating line allows me to do that, and I can still combat any wind that comes up. So those are gonna be my three weapons of choice as I explore Corbett, and just to see what's working before my students arrive. So what I'm doing, I've got my still water floater, taking the indicator off, still using the indicator leader. I've tied on a greater water floatman. It's designed to imitate a back swimmer. It's got a foam back on it, so it sits just below the surface. So it'll allow me to keep this fly out of trouble if I really cast it into some shallow, skinny water. And back swimmers like to hang at the surface because they're air breathers. They sit upside down on their back so they can look down in the underwater jungle below and go attack some things and eat. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just using a brisk choppy hand twist or a four to five inch strip, repeat, sorry, strip pause retrieve. So four to five inch strips, three or four at a time, and then a pause. And I'm using my floating line, the tip of it, as a bit of a gun sight because the rises to this fly are pretty aggressive. And because of the buoyant nature of the fly, I don't always feel it. It might be a little bit of slack in there. So as soon as I see a rise, I set into it. All I'm doing is whatever way the wind lets me cast, that's the way I go. And this wind's been swirling, so sometimes I'm off the bow, sometimes I'm off to the left side here, sometimes I'm straight down wind, sometimes I'm fortunate enough to get a cast towards the stern. That allows me to fan out and cover a lot of water, which is ideal. You just don't always want to be casting in the same lane all the time. You always want to present your fly at different angles and in different areas so different fish can find it. Saw the swirl, no connection. This fly is just underneath the surface. Sometimes it actually causes a wake. But I didn't stick them, so if the fish is still around, hopefully I can get them again. But the good thing is, casting and retrieving using floating lines or midge tips on the surface or just subsurface will produce fish. 
good to know we've got different options we can do depending on the conditions Mother Nature is going to throw at us on any given day. Also watching for rolling fish because in these shallows that's one of the keys to fall is look for moving or rolling fish. Fish making a surface disturbance. And if you see one fish, make a note of it. Two fish, you want to go visit that area because that could be an indication there could be a group of rainbows in there foraging and feeding and cruising and you want to get over there and get amongst them. We call it the two fish rule. So I'm always scanning, looking for that. If a fish rolls within a comfortable casting distance, of course I'm going to try and cover that rise. And with the breeze we got today, this is going to create a little bit of surface current and the fish are generally going to move upwind. So you see a rise, if I saw a rise move down below me there, my next cast would probably be on a 30 degree angle upwind of that fish. Uh, to anticipate its move. And you've got to be prepared when you make a cast with a boatman or a back swimmer and it lands and that fly plops, that fly lands very, very reminiscent of how the naturals fly back and drop into the water. So always got to be prepared as soon as that fly lands to either get eaten right away or within a few seconds so that's not the time to maybe have a stretch or look around or or see where your friends are you want to pay particular attention as soon as those flies drop because that's often when you're going to get that grab and it's going to be aggressive Just had a fish roll behind me, come right out of the water. But that's right into the teeth of the wind, so I'm not going to risk getting a tangle with this long 12 foot leader I got going here. Good, I hope he's coming on the shoals. You know, Corbett is such a wonderful fishery to do still water schools on because it's a small 72 acre lake. There are shallow shoal areas to explore there are drop-offs to explore and there's deep water to explore. I've just been cruising over the deeper areas, I've noticed some fish marking 15 to 20 to 25 even 29 feet down. So what I've done is I've anchored myself in about five feet of water, the drop-off literally plunges away in front of me. I'm gonna use my clean sweep fast to cast as long as I can let that line sink and then the differing sink rates along this line type 4 rear section type 6 middle section inch and a half per second front section allows me to sweep my fly in this case a fab a pink dancer fab to see if i can dredge up a fish and attract them this way these fish are probably still in deep water it's early fall still focused on zooplankton so blob coloration helps match that and I'm just going to sweep it up. You could also use leech patterns or dragonfly nymph patterns like a spun and clipped deer hair gomphus and take fish this way. So this is one of the great options. If they're not on the shallows and they're not cruising the edges, then work the depth. So we're going to see if this method will work so I can advise my students to give it a try. It's all about experimentation. Different locations, different retrieves, different lines. So what I switched up to now because most of the fish have still been in that summer period. They're in the, the deep water coming slowly venturing onto the shallows part of this early fall season fishing. So I put my clean sweep fast on. This line sinks in a u-shaped pattern with an apse worm, choppy hand twist. And this is what I get. Nice little fish. Apse worm right in the face. Right in the scissors. Just belted it. Get that fly out. And there we go. We'll put her back. Some fish on the apps. Heading down to the north end of Corbett. Uh, south end's a little crowded right now, which is okay. Uh, but I want to get away and just experiment with some things. I'm going to start out with, um, this is a, if you're wondering what this is, this is called a uh, rod glove. So it protects the rod while it's 
you know, taken down, ready to go, but I've got my coastal quick shooter with a fab set up. So we'll give that a whirl, see if we can draw a few fish in, see if the attractor techniques work. And then I think, because I'm seeing a few fish move on the surface, and I've seen the odd back swimmer flying by, I think I might uh, pull out the floating line and put on a back swimmer pattern and sort of drift the shallows lock style. Um, the wind is perfect for this, just a light ripple. This marlin of mine drifts perfectly under those conditions. And just cover water and see if I can coax some fish up. So that's the plan. We'll have to see how it works out. You always got to keep your options open. And again, and again with these still water schools, I'm just trying to find out for my students what some of my recommended tactics and strategies might be. They will take attractor tactics. Got a nice rainbow here. Got the tequila fab right in his mouth. Hand twist retrieve, 10 seconds down. On the shoal, parallel the drop off. Let's let him go. Attractors are always a great technique to try on, on a new still water or out for the first time because you're triggering that grab, get a fish, careful throat pump sample, and maybe refine your presentation to more natural stuff or keep on going with the attractors. So now I think I'm going to move around a little bit so I can fish parallel to the drop and hang a blob under an indicator and see if that'll work. One up, let's go do the stern. Scotty anchor cleats, anchor locks rather, just make the job so easy. The anchor out, ready to go. So we're moving so we can sit with the wind at our back adjacent to the drop off and see if we can get one by hanging a blob under an indicator to take advantage of these early fall, late summer Daphnia feeders. Anchored up, my bow is probably in about four or five feet of water, firmly planted in the in the cara, and my stern. I don't know if you can see it, probably can't, the way this reflects is in about 16 feet of water. So I'm just going to work my blob about 10 feet down, right adjacent to the transition from shoal to my right to deep water to my left, and get these fish that are cruising along here that are still focused on zooplankton and daphnia. So we're going to fish a blob, a prawn color, that's similar to the daphnia that's currently available in Corbett right now. Blobs under indicators are working. I had one already in the space of five minutes. Three minutes later, I got absolutely crushed. The fish took that blob, just hanging there on an indicator on a dead run. Must have had a weak spot in the leader because it snapped it clean, and that fish was doing cartwheels down the shoal for a few feet with that blob probably stuck in its face before it could shake it loose. So we know blobs work. So what I'm gonna do now is take this opportunity to re-rig the floating line with a back swimmer pattern, and we're just gonna lock style Casting and drifting with the wind at our back, this Marlin SP14, this light wind, drifts beautifully in this lock style method. And I believe we can take a few fish covering these shallow shoals with a back swimmer pattern. First came down here, I was sort of by myself, but a couple of float tubers, a couple other boats down here. Three of them lock styling like myself, so I'm gonna see if I can sneak in along beside them. 
get a drift in at least over the shallows. If not, then head back up to the now somewhat deserted south end of the lake, right by the lodge, and drift that beautiful shoal there. Some really beautiful shoals to work, both with the cast fly from an anchor position and drifting lock style. Lock style on these shallow shoals is such a great way to cover the water because you're always presenting your flies to fresh fish. And we've had fish rolling and moving around. Looks like some of them are feeding on perhaps some late season calabatus, some terrestrials, and mating and migrating back from us. See how we do. Drift one produced nothing. Didn't see any fish rising. Kind of funny, while I was fishing uh, anchored earlier, I saw a couple of fish roll and slash at the surface. But we'll go out and give it another try again. Continue using the Stillwater floater with the greater water floatman on about 12 feet a liter, down to 4X, uh, 4 flex strong tippet. Because these takes are uh, aggressive when they eat them. Let's see if we can lure one up. Because we're only drifting over anywhere from, we get on the shoal six feet to as skinny as three or even two feet. These fish will come in here and feed on whatever they find at this time of the year. And we've had some back swimmers active. So we'll drift one through one more time. If not, We'll head up to the south end of the lake where the wind will be a little slower, but we'll still get a beautiful drift on one of these great shallow shoals that uh, Cormit is famous for. Well, we're going to try this one more time. I've had pulls, I've had, I've had two fish for sure take my greater water floatman, but I just, have, for some reason, I can't lock them up. And I've seen the odd fish rise. I'm going to do one more drift down here. The wind's picking up, and then we'll go see if we can do it down at the south end where the winds will be a little lighter because that's where the wind's coming from and I'm pretty sure we can get these fish lock styling so that's that's good to know too. Well when you know it I get down to the south end and the wind has basically changed direction 180 degrees but still we're going to tough it out. I've anchored the boat broadside going to be casting into the toolies beside me the bulrushes beside me there's a little bit of a trench in here I believe just a, maybe a couple feet difference from the five feet we're anchored in Going to continue to work the floating line with the greater water floatman. If that doesn't work, I might change up to a halfback or a cruncher. Um, these fish are in here to hunt and feed, so they're pretty opportunistic and will respond to anything if you can get it past their nose in such a way that they like it and want to eat it. So, anchor it up, give her a go. Well, my beautiful blue sky and puffy white clouds has been replaced by cooler air temperatures and high overcast. It seems to have cooled the fish activity as well. But the good thing about today, I was able to get out, try different methods, try different locations, stripping a tractor such as FABs using clear intermediate lines or my coastal quick shooter line along the drop-offs adjacent to the beautiful clear shoals Corbettus Favis 4 worked well. Suspending blobs 10 to 12 feet down right on the drop-off also worked well. These fish are transitioning again from summer to fall so they're still fixated on zooplankton from time to time and a blob does an excellent job when they're eating zooplankton. And then we saw fish moving on the shoals. So I got some tugs and bites, uh, casting and stripping flies uh, tight against the uh, shoreline vegetation and also did well drifting lock style using a floating line again because those shoals are so shallow using back swimmer patterns because the fish are in there chasing these uh, big aggressive insects down and they really hammer them. But all manner of small nymphs would work as well because those shoals are holding the calabatus nymphs, damsels, even small scuds. So uh, always a good tactic. I hope you've enjoyed today's video, give me a little more insight into the preparation I go through to do my still water schools. If you enjoy these kinds of videos, please let me know in the comments section below as I'm happy to do more content like this. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you're enjoying the content on my channel, please consider subscribing. It really helps trying to get to that next threshold of 15,000 subscribers. So until next time, get out on the water, enjoy the fall season. Thanks for watching.